Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Aussie StarCraft. We're here in the Christmas season, we're bringing you some games from the DreamHack Winter Tournament that took place just a few days ago. Here in the top right hand corner, fresh in his Christmas colours of red, it is our Protoss player Liquid Hero. In the bottom left hand corner is our Blue Zerg. We have a Lenok. Now for those of you who aren't familiar with Lenok, very uh, good Korean Zerg player. Had a, had a great year this year, actually did very well in DreamHack in Stockholm, he actually won DreamHack Stockholm earlier in the year, so excellent player, very uh, familiar with the DreamHack tournament format. Played played amateur Zerg back in Brood Wars, but uh, obviously uh, in, increased his uh, abilities over the years and now uh, playing professionally in StarCraft 2 and Heart of the Swarm, and uh, consistently being one of the very good Zerg players in recent times. So. Interesting to see uh, how, how he matches up against Hero, particularly with uh, Hero's fairly patented, ooh, trip over that one, patented Zer uh, Protoss vs Zerg aggression. Hero uh, quite, uh, quite aggressive in general, but particularly against Zerg players has been, been renowned for some very aggressive builds, so very excited to see how both these players react. You saw, uh, saw him manage to take a swipe at that drone on the way by. Uh, quick thinking there. This drone's already down to half health. Uh, if you're wondering why Lennox e even bothering with this, it's one, because Hero's, Hero's trying to try and irritate him with it, but two, if this drone decides to try and block at the expansions already at half health, it'll be a lot less time that uh, Lennox has to muck around dancing back and forth with, with the probe, uh, much as he is now. You can see Lennox trying to get this probe out of the way so that he can drop the hatchery. And, uh, oh, and it looks like Hero's actually going to drop a pylon to try and uh, delay that expansion just a little bit further. Now, not, not many Protoss players are fans of dropping the pylon. We don't, we don't see a lot of it, not like we used to see in Wings of Liberty. It was almost guaranteed that Protoss players would try and do this to upset, upset the Zerg build. But uh, particularly in Heart of the Swarm, we've seen a lot less of it. Hero obviously decided it's a good form. I'm actually going to do it twice here to considerably uh, delay Lennox expansions, but Lennox, Lennox responding with the Queen a few Zerglings to mop these up. This is a considerable investment. It will be 200 minerals uh, lost for Liquid Hero. Liquid Hero actually uh, deciding to go for a Forge first fast expand. Well, actually, I think the Nexus Nexus went down. Oh no, Forge first, then the Nexus. And a uh, few Photon Cannons going up now so that no uh, Zerglings can streak across the map and make life difficult. So two bases going down simultaneously now for Lenek. He was hovering a few minerals while he waited to mop up those uh, extraneous pylons. Now uh, go, going for a fairly gasless o opening here. Lo lots of queens, lots of, lots of drain up. So could be quite a macro game out of, out of Lenek, which should be exciting. See how he responds to what looks like is going to be some sort of two base play and timing out of Liquid Hero. So could be quite an exciting game here on Derelict Watcher and uh, hopefully they, they put on a bit of a show for us. Now, while we wait for things to get underway, as it seems like these guys do have a bit of a gentleman's agreement going, just like like to thank everyone for their support recently. Had, had quite a lot of uh, positive feedback, both in messages and comments and different bits and pieces. Appreciate you guys taking the time to do that. And uh, also enjoy interacting with you here and on Facebook. Yeah, head, go ahead and uh, join us over on, on the Facebook page, particularly in the holiday season. We will be doing uh, a lot of uh, community fun games. So if you want to come along and play a few games with us, uh, just jo just join the Facebook page and we'll organise those there and uh, we can play and uh, have a bit of muck around in the Christmas season. So thank thanks for all the feedback, guys. It's the cool community that makes, makes StarCraft uh, so fun and enjoyable. And I uh, ho hope you guys are enjoying your Christmas season. So I know I finished work yesterday for a few weeks, so it gives me plenty of time to catch up on casting and finish DreamHack Winter. As you'll know, the Ace of Team Story Cup also uh, concluded recently, so we'd love to cast the finals for that as well. Just just depend on how much time I can uh, steal away in here to, to keep casting. Lenek deciding to grab his gas now, around, around the 6 minute 40 mark. Now, this is important for a few reasons. Important because he's obviously going to need 100 gas before he can grab things like Zergling Speed. Also going to need that same 100 gas for his lair. 
that puts the layer timing at 80 seconds after 7 minutes, so it's going to be at least nine, 9 minutes before the layer concludes, and it's going to be another 80 seconds after that before the spire can finish up. So no, we know that we won't be seeing Mutalus before the 10 or 11 minute mark. That's actually quite significant. It means that, uh, well, the Mutalus, which generally cause so much problems for Protoss, the timing for them is significantly delayed if Lenok actually decides to use Mutalisks at all. We're just starting up now. It looks like a Roach Warren also underway, so... Lenok though actually just powering along on drones, 57 drones to 46, so starting to get that economic edge. Lenok trying to scout uh, Hero's main base, but Hero actually no tech hidden up there at all, and we'll see that Lenok's actually going to be quite in the dark here for the next few minutes. if we. Swap over to Lennox view, we can see he has very little idea of what tech options are on the way. Whereas uh, Hero's actually hidden this gateway here, and there's a few Phoenix already on the map. Oh, now they're going to be picked out as they pick off this Overlord, so Lennox now knows that the Stargate is on the way. Throwing down a macro hatch now, he's going to throw down a few spore crawlers trying to pr protect his drone line. That's quite a heavy investment in gas, it's going to be at least... Uh, five spore crawlers, so that's 500 minerals spent there and uh, a few overlords lost into the bargain so these, these first few phoenix have been quite uh, cost effective for Hero if we check out the units lost tab you can see it is actually already 500 units 500 resources lost for Lennox not to mention this uh, irritating supply block so Liquid Hero doing quite a bit of damage with these early phoenix gonna micro them back and forth so and pick off a bit more overlords and uh, going to get a few of these, uh, a few of the lava as well. So, just being a little bit cheeky there, I think. But uh, using those phoenix to great effect. So, there's not only the direct damage done that we just saw, but actually the indirect damage of having to throw down all of these uh, spore crawlers at the various base locations. Bit of a roach counter attack here, though, to try and uh, prevent prevent Hero from powering out to his third base, but uh, that will be in vain. These Phoenix and Void Ray are able to clean up that Roach counterattack quite quickly. And you can see that the Robo facility and the support bay, well the robotics facility and the robotics bay actually uh, both both finished up now, so we'll be seeing some Colossus Void Ray action out of Hero. So not that common that we see this build, but obviously Void Ray is very good against uh, virtually everything, everything a bit except Queens and Hydralis anyway, but uh, the Colossi are very good at mopping up Hydralis, so quite an interesting choice here from uh, Hero, but we see uh, see that Lennox decided to counter this with quite a lot of Zerglings, trying to sneak a few of these in as a counter attack and actually do some economic damage to Hero, but these things like the Photon Overcharge and the Well Positioned Cannon are going to make it very difficult for Lennox to try and exploit these. We actually have a, a, <laughs> a Void Ray uh, Zealot Harass here, which is just a little bit interesting, certainly not something we always see, but actually here I'm going to power through and pluck off this Roach Warren, which is going to be quite a, quite a bit of a pest for Leno. He's going to have to rebuild that, and indeed we see him throwing that down now at the third base location. Uh, right here behind, behind the base, a little bit harder for things like the Void Rays to harass and pick off. These, these uh, Zealots of Hero giving their life valiantly for Ire, but now we're seeing quite a few uh, Roaches and Hydras on the way. Hero obviously responding with a few Colossi of his own, two already in play, uh, as well as a significant Sentry Force. So, as, as, as you're probably aware, Derelict Watcher, very big open map in the middle. It's literally a Zerg's dreamland for confrontation in the middle of the map so things like sentries are much harder to use you need much better force fields to divvy up the enemy army and uh, it's actually quite oh, nice force fields there from here as we're saying that to isolate and pluck off these roaches but uh, it's, it's quite hard in maps like Vel Belcher Vestige where you have just stacks of ramps that you can cut off with those force fields quite easily much harder on derelict watcher to cut up the zerg army actually have Lennox going for this uh, fourth base in the top, top left hand corner of the map so that he can defend uh, vertically again against these various attacks. It may seem strange to take this one as opposed to this fourth base but if you do take this fourth it leaves you very exposed to quick counter attacks here and it leaves your other base exposed against 
against pressure, things like the air that he knows that Hero has quite a good deal of, and yeah, it just leaves you open to avenues of attack from from multiple angles. I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna take that watchtower, so I can spot this army moving into place for Lennox. He's actually gonna gonna snipe that expansion very quickly. You have the Vipers stealing the mothership core that, so that Hero can't actually mass recall out of here. Very interesting choice. Going to use the extractors to uh, steal a bit of, get a bit of energy off that extractor now that the hatchery is died. But uh, Hero playing very well here, able to snipe that uh, base quite quickly and keep the Zerg on even bases. The base count's all important when you're versing uh, Protoss. If Protoss have equal or more bases than you, you know you are in an uphill battle. But uh, Lennox trying quite uh, consistently to to gra grab those extra bases, but Hero just doing a great job of sniping. But there's quite a large Zerg force. A lot of Zerglings being caught there in the opening vo volley of those Colossi. These Vipers are gonna gonna leave those uh, Colossi very exposed, and one Colossi is picked off. We have the Vipers grabbing the second one quite quickly. These Void Rays, though, doing a lot of work, uh, cleaning up a lot of roaches here. If we look at the units lost tab, we can see it's quite even, 5,600 to 5,400. So very even game here, but if we look in the production tab, we can see the start of a mutilus tech switch here out of Lennox. So first five muters are on the way, and uh, Void Ray is obviously not as effective against mutilus, but we can see these Phoenix still uh, floating around and ready to uh, ready to engage. These these actually seem to be new Phoenix. Not no kills on any of these Phoenix. It looks like Heroes actually rebuilt some of these. Uh, Phoenix. Not all of them are the existing Phoenix from the first engagement. So, and if we click around, there's actually no kills on any of them. So definitely not those uh, four Phoenix from earlier. But uh, obviously, Hero, Hero aware of the fact that he is vulnerable to this mutilus tech switch. And we do have four more on the way now. So a few already on the map, and a few more to come. It's going to actually take our muta count up to 21. Oh, what prism full of units! They're going to get picked off. Nice pick up for Lennox, that is going to help him out in the units loss tab, give him the edge there. And uh, we'll see how Hero reacts to this. He's continuing to produce Phoenix two at a time. He's actually up to three starports now, so there's almost a whole dedication to Skytos. A few select ground units just to prevent being overwhelmed by Hydralis, but there's a substantial investment in air. It's not, not every day, particularly in a major tournament, that we see three Stargate actually being utilised in, in main play. Looks like almost all of the production <laughs> facility for Hero tucked away in this third base, so very uh, vested interest in keeping this one alive. Hero going for his fourth base as well, throwing down quite a few cannons just to protect against these counterattacks. You can see how he insulates the cannons with the pylons and the nexus, just so that Zerglings can't get a very large surface area there. Gonna pile in here, a few force fields just to separate these roach units. Unfortunately for Lennox, not quite paying attention, half his army not being engaged there, the other half are dying quite quickly to these immortals and void rays. Static defense will die very quickly as well. Though uh, definitely a good oh, a few of those Phoenix being picked off. The Viper's actually uh, working to counter these Phoenix quite well. The uh, corruptor is also going to be very effective against those. So, liquid heroes ooh, in a bit of uh, very even engagement here, but uh, hero has to be very careful about how he engages this ground army, almost entirely uh, helpless against air. This uh, co this interesting corruptor mutilus viper force we see is certainly isn't the norm at all. So. East Phoenix very good against the Mutilus, but things like uh, being picked off by the Vipers just isn't what we're used to seeing as the counter. But Hero ever vigilant with these counterattacks, Zealots moving out against the new fourth base location of Lennox. It's just this consistent uh, inability to get a fourth base up that, that's really uh, putting Lennox in a very difficult position. So we're not used to seeing uh, the Sky Toss out of Hero, but uh, certainly showing us very capably that he's more than able to use it in the in these engagements. 2-1 upgrades on his ground units. The air units are currently completely unupgraded, so... But uh, Hero continuing to produce Phoenix left, right and centre, so... Very uh, interesting engagements, that, that's to be sure. Have, have we got the fleet bacon on the, on the field just yet? 
yep, Fleet Beacon is gone, and we do have those Anteon Pulse Crystals, which is is certainly uh, an absolute must in, in the Phoenix vs. Muta play style. You, you just need that extra range, but the Corruptors, the t two natural armor on the Corruptors, does make them uh, quite good at tanking things like the Phoenix's damage. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what, what Hero decides to go with now. He is actually starting to grab those air upgrades, so we may actually see him continue to commit to this sky toss play style and certainly certainly not what we're used to in a in a PVZ. So this is a massive aerial armor <laughs> armada out of Lennox. This is 32 Mutalus backed by three corruptors. Nice storm there is is gonna force the Mutalus away momentarily. But uh, these these Phoenix will be hard pressed to engage the corruptors. Another storm there, they're not quite able to do the damage he would like to. Picking off the Viper there is definitely Definitely key for for heroes continuing to just pluck away at the edge of this cloud. As one of the times that uh, Zerg just really struggle against the air matchup. If you if you're playing air versus air as Zerg against Protoss, you are going to struggle. You think I'll build corruptors to counter the void rays? The void rays. E oh, mothership pick off very nice there for Lennox. Nice control. You're obviously forgetting that he had that. Uh, had that moving across the front there. Nice storm from Hero is able to damage this cloud cloud of Mutalus, but still 26 Mutalus, 12 Corruptors. You see the constant micro from both these players. Oh, picking off a Phoenix there as well. Both these players trying desperately to uh, keep the other other player on the back foot. Oh, four High Templars there. Going to be able to lay down a bevy of storms. Got to be careful, particularly you see how much these Mutalus clump up. Can make them very vulnerable to storm. Lennox actually picking off the High Templar, picking off one, two, so the Mutalus themselves taking substantial damage, dropping to red and orange health, and uh, dropping to 16 Mutalus. So he went for the High Templars, perhaps a, a little bit greedy there. Did wear two very heavy storms, so though Hero's uh, own unit count suffering substantially as well. Bit of a roach zergling counter attack here as Lennox tries to clean up these uh, forces that are continuing to stream down and harass his uh, third and fourth base. Trying to get some mining going, finally got his fourth base up, but uh, Hero's had his in play for quite some time. And it's interesting interesting to see how uh, how much use Hero is making of these LSC, just streaming them into this this new fifth base, and just trying to keep Lennox on, on the back foot as much as possible. They're seeing very little uh, tech choices beyond beyond the current air engagement. If we look at the production, we do actually have Zerg fly level 3 up, and certainly not every game that we see those. We actually have the Ultralist Cavern on the way as well, so we we could well see an Ultralist transition out of this, and Zerg are very dangerous for their tech switch. They can remax very quickly on a different tech choice. It's going to pick off a stray Void Ray there, but our players here just very even in supplies. So this this game wearing, wearing on to the half hour mark now, but uh, been non-stop action between these these two players. The air units just continuing to kite back and forward, trying to gain any advantage they can. That hero is a very uh, compact force here. A few Phoenix and a few High Templar, just just trying to counteract this uh, massive massive Zerg armada that we have. 16 corruptors, 23 muters, with 10 more on the way. Is substantial aerial force. I can see that. We're, we actually have the Protoss Air Weapons Level 2 and Ground Weapons Level 3 actually well underway now for for our Protoss Player Liquid Hero. Just so consistent on these Zealot counterattacks. If, if you're not doing these as Protoss versus Zerg, it's, it's probably why you're struggling as much as you are. Got to be able to use these expendable units like Zealots to, to stall out the Zerg macro. You can see hallu even hallucinate a few uh, Void Rays here to Perhaps, uh, perhaps a uh, worry, worry Lennox out of engaging. We can see Lennox has pulled back a against this and is is going in favour of the base trade with these Mutalists. So able to work away the cannons and going to kill all these workers as they try and make their escape. So more focused on the workers than he is actually on the expansion itself. As Hero takes out his own expan, as Hero takes out Lennox's own fourth base, Lennox is going to return the favour on Hero and actually swing up here into the main. This, this is an interesting choice 
for Linux is now able to do quite a lot of damage to the main base of Hero. Things like this production is isolated. This amount of Nudal is going to be able to do a massive amount of damage to the base. Hero is going to, going to be forced into a base race scenario. He's actually powering forward with these four immortals. So many kills, 12 kills, 18 kills, 7 kills, 17 kills. 60 kills between these four immortals just powering away. So one of the most interesting base races we've seen in a little while, Mutalus versus four Immortals. Oh, three now. They're going to pluck away and take out that uh, that uh, evolution chamber before it can finish the upgrade, and they're just going to continue straight into the main. So more Mutalists, unfortunately, idle in the main base. Perry just continuing to try and engage these Mutalists as best he can. Wants, wants to keep them out of his main base. It did take a little bit of damage. Two of his starports being unpowered does hamper his production significantly, but uh, we see quite a quite a quite an advantage in the hero's force at the moment. These immortals finally going to get cleaned up here. 25 kills on this executor, unfortunately gets plucked plucked off there and able to do a lot of damage. Cleaned out a lot of the tech structures for Lenek, which is is quite important. Means that Lenek has to remax on low tier units. He may actually not be able to produce any more air units. Oh, there is a spire here, but that spire is starting to bleed out. And uh, the Phoenix now going to do a bit of damage in the main base as well. So clean, out, clean off this gas. I'm going to pull back away. But this Mutalus and Corruptor Force is going to try and carry No, unable to connect there with them. This is an interesting back and forth game. Here is actually has established quite a bold fifth base, cl very close to Lennox. That That's going to give him the... Uh, give him the position he needs to really prevent Lennox from a being able to retake this fourth and fifth base. If you see what Hero's done, he's lost his base up here and decided that at this point of the game he wants to be putting the aggression on these two base locations here and here. But because they are so close together, Lennox actually mined out a bit of this. Can still take it. There's still a lot left up here because of the number of times that Hero sniped it. But you can see that Hero's thinking he's going to want to, in the long term, position himself down here where he can prevent Lennox from uh, retaking these bases. He's going to re pick off this fourth, and that, that, that's going to be a big nail in the coffi coffin of Lennox. You see, Lennox actually not mining currently, down to 140 minerals, just a bit of long distance mining, whereas Hero's already mining on, on this fourth base. It's fully saturated, almost oversaturated here, and he's actually throwing down. Well, re-throwing down his fourth. So I have a fourth and fifth base mining. And it looks like Lennox going to have to commit to the base trade here. So Liquid Hero certainly got an edge on, on Lennox here. But the base trade uh, will be will be all important. How much production damage can Lennox do? And what's he going to do with these infestors? So infestors very Oh, big storm there on these Mulus. Mulus going to be forced to engage over the cannons. And that will be a lot of damage there. Lennox actually, nice fungals from those infests are going to catch most of these units in play, but the Archons are going to be able to rack it up the damage and clean up the last of those Mutalists. So, what a back and forth game between Lennox and Hero. Great play out of both these players. I particularly loved uh, loved Hero and Lennox uh, going back and forth across the middle of the map. It was almost constant micro from those two aerial forces dancing back and forth. The reason for that is if either of those players fails to respond, it's quite easy for them to sweep into the base and do damage with those very mobile air units. So, very action-packed game between these two. I particularly loved Hero's uh, Hero's base decisions there. I think I think we could learn a lot from watching Hero play. If if you're struggling against Zerg on this map, I'd I'd recommend rewatching this game. See how Hero put pressure on Linux, how he did it, and where. And I, I think it's a, a great lesson for all of us. So fantastic uh, PVZ out of Hero here, and uh, he, he'll be moving on uh, moving on to his next set of games, and hopefully we'll be seeing him in the semi-finals or even the finals later on. So, hope you guys enjoyed the cast. We will catch you all in the next cast. Thanks, guys.